Hey, I was hoping you'd show up. I have something for you to commemorate our uh, mission. We did good together. Yeah, we did. You, uh, talked to Tilda at all? I tried. I don't think even a hot forge could melt that ice. And you say she wants to help? I think so. Well, let's hope. I gotta go. Just let me know when you need us. Aloy. It appears that we have some interesting new guests. I'm glad to see you're okay, though. I heard you gave the Tanakh something to talk about. I was half expecting you to burst in through the ceiling riding a Sunwing. Sorry to disappoint. Thoughts on our new Zenith acquaintance? I'd say she smells like death, but even death smells of something. She's more like a cold piece of metal. Bent on repelling all semblance of life. She's... Definitely different. I have to go. I trust you to keep things civil around here? I'll make sure Aaron doesn't punch Silence in the face, if that's what you mean. Thanks. You... you flew? Kotala told me! And took out Regala's machines? You know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. What was Leviathan again? A flood control system back in the Great Delta. It was built by Eileen Sasaki, another of our ancestors. If we can acquire the data on it, we might be able to fix the system back home. Then my sister, my parents, other families won't have to live in fear of their homes washing away when the long rains come. Right. And to find it, we need to head back to San Francisco. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here, our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her to ask her well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. I don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths or just scared of her. Probably both. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. And I haven't forgotten about the data on Leviathan. I'll let you know when I make it back to landfall. Thank you, Aloy. There's Gwen stuff in here now. Must be all of us. I haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten, and paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am... <sighs> inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I who should be thanking you. I bet people are curious about that new arm of yours. None more than our Quen ally, I assure you. She couldn't wait to take it apart and figure out how it works. I gave her the data I used to build the thing, hoping I would satisfy her curiosity instead. Good luck with that. Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that... doesn't seem natural. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and... and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Your people keep mentioning the Wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings. 
and leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena during the cool route. And now, you have done it. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves, it will never be forgotten. So, tell me, how did it feel? I won't lie. Pretty good. I can only imagine. I have to go. But I'll be briefing everyone on the plan soon. Understood. I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence, but no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. Did you see Katala's new arm? Welcome back, Aloy. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? I was an orphan. I had always been alone. By my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path, beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon, I knew I had to help you. To do right by her. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away. I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant, visionary. She cared so deeply for the world, for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab after Farzineth's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something after the call. I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? All this time. Thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? 
I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. You said before that you're not like the others, Guinness. That you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it. But complicity became a means of survival, both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta. The secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta in Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island, heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space-worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment. We've learned our lesson. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in the base? 10, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. So Eric. Was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world then they would be quite disappointed to meet him. Though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Farzeneth. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician, able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough. And the others. 
I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths, for Bena. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amass their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer, someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What, like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of Ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. Okay, I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. You know, we've never played Machine Strike together. Oh no. <laughs> I got enough trouble with Stalo always kicking my ass. Who says I'm any good at it? The way my luck's going. So, I'll bet you're we'll return. Bravo. You managed to sway a Zenith to your side. Care to explain? Not a chance. I thought you said the weapon was ready. There's always room to optimize. But that's not why you're here. I assume you want to comprehend my undertakings. So, ask away. Since when were you so forthcoming? Since you turned this into a waiting game. And as it seems you have found modest success. Perhaps I'm willing to be generous. Okay, so your big plan, everything you've been manipulating for the last few months. Let me see if I got this straight. You learned about the Zenith from Hades when you interrogated it. 
Then you came up with a plan to defeat them by using a Tanakh army and that weapon. And to get the Tanakhs to fight for you, you, or rather the sons of Prometheus, armed Regala's rebels with override tech. Did you have an actual question, or are you still playing catch-up? So all this time, even before I found the coordinates at the Spire, you were out here scheming. Why couldn't you just tell me? When I learned of the Zenith's return to Earth, I laid out my plans. I knew I would one day require an army of overzealous Tanakh to assault the Zenith base. The casualties would be... extreme. And I knew you would never allow such a sacrifice no matter how necessary. Thus, I devised a means to remove your interference from the equation. At the Hades Proving Lab. You wanted me to surrender to the Zenith at the Hades Proving Lab. They almost killed me. Based on everything I knew about them, I concluded they would find you a useful asset. Thereby keeping you out of harm's way, and more importantly, out of my way. So you really didn't know they had their own clone of Elizabeth? No. Unfortunately, there was no way I could have known that particular detail. Detail? Well, I guess if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Tell me about the weapon. How does it work? I've upgraded the delivery system. It now emits a wave-like effect covering a significant distance. <sighs> that doesn't fully answer my question. No, but I'd be a fool to reveal its inner workings. After all, why did you withhold your plan for dealing with the Zenith drones? Yes. Even you can appreciate the value of secrecy when warranted. Suffice it to say that the weapon will work. The intricacies of how is knowledge that is mine alone. Why create the Sons of Prometheus? You didn't need a Sarah to make override tech. They were a necessary safeguard. My time serving Hades in the Eclipse demonstrated the risks of getting directly involved. Through the Sons of Prometheus, I could execute my plans. All while remaining anonymous. Except to a Sarah. How did you get a Sarah to work for you? I knew there was an associate of the Asaram Tinker, Durval, who escaped his failed assault on Meridian. It was trivial to track her down and gain her cooperation. She wanted to succeed where Durval had failed. So you promised her Regala, and the Tanakhth. The Sarah would help you create a machine-riding army that wanted to see Meridian burn as much as she did. And so a partnership was born out of thirst for blood, bonded in mutual self-interest. You think you had everything figured out, huh? I did. Why help Regala take over? If you wanted an army, you could have just gone to Hakaro. Before Regala's rebellion, Hakaro was only concerned with battling machines and fostering friendships with Akarja. Even if I gained his ear, he would never agree to send his forces to battle a threat he couldn't understand. So helping a bloodthirsty exile was easier? Yes. Exceedingly so. All Regala craved was war against the Karja and anyone who threatens the Tanakht. She would have led the tribe into battle without question, which was precisely what I needed. While I was out there, I had a couple run-ins with the Quen. The tribe from across the ocean. And? Their entire tribe was shaped around the discovery of focuses. One of them, Alva, even joined me here. Don't you want to know more about them? No. They stumbled upon the greatest technological artifact from the ancient world, and what did they do with it? They shrouded the knowledge they unearthed in mysticism and taboo, creating a pantheon out of corporate shields. Yes, well, it also led them to Thebes. Did it now? So those run-ins with the Quen I mentioned. On one of them, I teamed up with their expedition to search Thebes. We found Pharaoh at the end. You must have needed Omega clearance. So, what was it like? Worse than you can imagine. He single-handedly wiped out collective human knowledge. I'm sure it was still less than he deserved. Let me guess. You would have scraped him into a jar so you could prod his brain, like what you did with Hades. For a start. 
All right, Silence. I think I've talked to you long enough. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And try not to mess with Tilda while you're in here, okay? I don't need the two of you butting heads. Ah, uh, yes. About your Zenith ally. I wonder if you understand what kind of person you're dealing with. For someone to live as long as she has, outlast as many calamities, well, your goals may be aligned now, but I'd watch for the moment they diverge. Yeah, I'm aware. Reminds me of someone else I know. Survival is only a necessity to my greater purpose, Aloy. I'd hoped you'd recognize that by now. Do you know something or not? Oh, I know a great deal of things. But on this, just call it a feeling. Oh, a feeling? You mean you finally had one? Huh. Guess even you can change, Silence. 